First of all, though, it is time to do learning. And this is one of those things that you read in the paper that makes your brain go all about the carbon footprint of emails. I know. There was a big report in the papers yesterday, though, saying that emails are a bit of a problem when it comes to climate change. How on earth can that be when it's just electronic? It's all there in the sky. What difference can it possibly make? Well, let's find out with John Buckley, the Managing Director of Carbon Footprint Limited. Hello, John. Hi, Luke. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Thank you very much. John, um, emails and carbon footprints, it makes no sense. They're just in the sky, aren't they? Well, they kind of are, but there are they aren't. So take yeah, sending an email does cause carbon emissions. It, you've got the computer that's on, and taking t as you t take time to write the email, it's burning electricity, using electricity, which cre creates carbon emissions. And then you've got the sending of the email, running it across the network, the internet, and then storing it somewhere on the cloud. And obviously, the person who gets it on their computer at the other end has to read it as well. So there's the power of their computer whilst doing it. So, so it all creates carbon emissions, you're, you're dead right. Okay, so, so the storage on a cloud, this is a thing because many of us, and I'm guilty of this myself, I've still got uh, 4,974 emails that I haven't read uh, in my inbox and I've got, I don't even want to think about it, 2,000 items in my de uh, deleted folder um, and the sent items, let's not talk about that. So there's a lot going on. Yeah, so yeah, and it's it's all there, isn't it? It's all stored on the cloud and on a big server room somewhere else in the world. That server's probably being backed up as well with all those unread emails that you've got. So yeah, probably best to just delete them and get, get rid of them, get them off the servers and the clouds and your computer. Uh, ultimately, it could be slowing down your computer as well, which then creates more carbon emissions for everything else that you're doing because it's just taking more time. Oh, really? It doesn't, yeah, of course, it makes perfect sense that you're, uh, the longer you're on it, the more it does. Now, one thing that does happen a lot is you get emails that are sent to lots of people that don't need to be. I guess it's worth thinking when you send an email about how many people you're sending it to. Yeah, definitely, because, yeah, more people you send it to, more people you copy in, more people are likely to open it and read it, unless they're like you and you've got loads of unread emails. But assuming people are going to open it and read it, then obviously that, that takes more electricity on their computer and more time, and it's, you know, more of their cloud storage space as well that it's clogging up. So, yeah, if you can take off a few people from the CC box on the email, then that, that, will, that will help, so that's a good starting point. And like you say, you've got loads that you've had kicking around for ages that you haven't read. Why don't you just, so you could just go ahead and, and delete those and, and get rid of those and, and start helping to save a few, few carbon emissions here and there. And whenever I've done that, there's always something important that I get rid of and then ending up causing offence. So at some point, I promise, I, I will go through them, yeah. Well, you just get quite a lot on a daily basis. But surely emails are still much more environmentally friendly than, say, popping something in the post box. Yeah, you're, you're dead right. So an, an email, in terms of the, the, the number of the grams of CO2 it produces, it's probably somewhere between uh, 0.5 grams of CO2 to 50 grams of CO2, depending on how big the email is, how many attachments you have and things like that. Um, if, if you're putting a, a letter in the post, yeah, it's probably going to be uh, 50 to 100 times greater in terms of the carbon emissions of, of sending that letter. So obviously emails are much more efficient than letters, but still, we, we send so many emails nowadays from billions and billions around the world uh, that it all adds up. And you think about you know, just sending 65 emails is about equivalent to driving a kilometre in a car in terms of the carbon emissions. So it, it does add up and it adds up quite quickly. Sorry, say that again. Sending day. 60 emails is the same as driving a kilometre in a car? Yeah. Pretty much. When you work it out, it's, it's shocking, isn't it? I, I didn't realise that until I did the sums this morning. So, yeah, it's worth coming back on a few of those emails, if you can do. Goodness me, it really is. I feel like I need to send an email to everybody here at work to tell them uh, not to stop <laughs> sending emails, but I don't know if that would uh, be uh, causing more of a problem. Uh, goodness I hope me! You don't listen in. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well... Uh, 
Yeah, let's hope so. But that what a statistic. 60 emails is the equivalent of driving a kilometre in a car. That Do you know what? It's really easy to just say, oh, it increases your carbon footprint because it's producing things, tra-la-la. It doesn't paint a picture. But that really has, and I suppose it makes it worse if you have it sitting there in storage in your inbox for ages. I feel guilty. I will deal well, with things. Years, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it will be if it's in my case. John, listen, thank you. Always a pleasure to speak to you. Good. Goodness me, isn't that something? 60 emails is the same as driving a kilometre in a car. So we cause damage to, I don't know, 120 emails in a day. Uh, some, and all the spam that's doing around. Stop it. Stop sending emails that you don't need to send, people. Goodness me.